Hello, uh, welcome back. This is another lecture video for ACO 3193, Strategic Tax Management. So in this lecture video, we will continue with our discussion on the topic of choosing an entity. So from the previous uh, lecture video on uh, choosing an entity, we have discussed the different um, forms of organizations. Uh, the, the, uh, no, the, the more uh, prominent ones, so proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So we already have discussed the strategy portion of it, no? um, yung distinctions, major distinctions among the three forms of organization. Now for this lecture video, we will now concentrate on the tax aspect, the right? tax aspect of uh, ng tatlong uh, uh, forms of organization. Uh, meron siyang similar. Uh, so, kung similar yan, it will not affect your decision making. Parang, parang sa MAS natin, yung sa short term, ano natin, short term uh, differential, rather, sa differential cost management natin. Diba? We no longer consider yung mga portions ng decision making natin na uh, we will incur naman regardless of the option that we choose. Diba? So it's, since hindi, ano siya, same lang siya, we, it will not affect our decision making. Kaya nga siya, differential cost management, we only take into account yung differential cost. At syempre, in that subject, no, we choose yung, yung least cost, uh, yung least costly sa ano, for the entity. Now for this one, syempre, uh, all other things being equal, syempre na, na, na ano na natin, na discuss na natin yung na, tax aspect niya, ito, i-consider mo na ngayon yung economic or yung tax aspect nung decision mo. In choosing whether you you advise to put up a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation. <clears throat> Now, isa sa mga i-consider mo no? as, as part of your tax strategic tax management will be the impact on income tax. So in fact, for this lecture video, we will concentrate on three, not really three. Oh, actually, three naman talaga siya. You have income tax, the regular income tax, and then you have final income tax, which includes final income tax and passive income, final income tax on capital gains, and final income tax on fringe benefits. And then we will also discuss yung uh, bad consequences, yung percentage tax, uh, business tax rather, business tax consequences of your options, uh, of, of this, ano, itong ating uh, forms of organization. Now, first we have income tax. Ito na tayo sa, ano na to, table na ito. Now for income tax, we have to distinguish uh, between those entity who uh, has the expectation or, or who does not have an expectation that their actual gross sales or gross receipts will not exceed 3 million. Or if they have already been operating, it will not exceed, it did not exceed 3 million in any 12 month period. And then the taxpayer is also registered as a non VAT taxpayer. Kasi meron siyang direct effect, um, not really for partnership and corporation, partnerships and corporation, but those uh, who are operating as a sole proprietorship, as a sole proprietor, rather. <clears throat> so again, para, tong, para gumana tong table na ito, dalawa yung titignan natin. Una yung amount ng gross sales or gross receipts depending kung ano yung line of business niya. Uh, kung engaged siya in the uh, sale of goods, gross sales siya. If engaged siya in the sale of services, then gross receipts. Receipt. Yan, okay. Yung threshold value natin, threshold amount natin ay 3 million. Okay. 
dapat hindi lumagpas. That's the first situation, hindi lumagpas. In end, so yung 3 million na yan ay 12 month period yung coverage niya. And sa so ibig sabihin meron pang pangalawang condition. And yung conjunction natin ay end meaning both conditions must be uh, fulfilled para mag-apply ng pinag-uusapan natin. That taxpayer is registered as a non-VAT taxpayer. Hindi lalagpas ng 3 million at registered siya as a non-VAT taxpayer. So hindi pwedeng isa lang yung namit niya. So kahit hindi siya lumagpas ng 3 million pero VAT taxpayer naman siya, this table, this slide, yung mga nakasulat dito will not apply. Or kahit non-VAT taxpayer siya pero lumalagpas naman siya ng 3 million, still this will not apply. So dapat both will both requirements are met. Uh, hindi siya lumagpas ng 3 million and non-VAT taxpayer siya. Okay. Uh, punta muna tayo sa partnership and corporation since parehas naman to. <clears throat> So dito, liable siya, no? yung corporation, liable siya for what we call the regular corporate income tax or the normal income tax or the basic income tax. So subject siya sa regular corporate income tax, which is computed at 20% or 25% of the taxable net income. Um, Yung op actually, it's not an option. Yung rate available, whether 20 or 25%, this one is an amendatory uh, provision provided by the create law. Sa so bago-bago lang ito. So if, if you are not familiar, no, I would understand if you are not familiar kung saan galing yun. As I recall, it 30% ang regular corporate income tax. So correct naman yun. But effective July 1, 2020, as mentioned by the trend, meron ka ngayon yan, 20 or 25%. Bakit or? Bakit kailangan mamili? Actually, you are not choosing. Ano siya? Qualification siya. If the net income of this particular corporation will not exceed 5 million and and ang kanyang total asset will not exceed uh, 100 million ay nawala no, 100 million if you meet both requirements your net income does not exceed 5 million and your assets does not exceed 100 million then your basic corporate income tax will be computed at the rate of 20%. If not, no, either lumagpas yung net income mo ng 5 million or lumagpas yung assets mo ng 100 million, then your rate ay 25%. Computed based on taxable net income. And, we, and when we say taxable net income, we learned in our income taxation, in tax one, the taxable net income is computed by deducting deducting your allowed deductions from your gross income. That is taxable net income. We also learned no, in tax one that uh, the regular corporate income tax is not, autom is not the automatic tax liability of a corporation. No? Meron tayong tinatawag na minimum corporate income tax, which is computed at 1% of gross income which you might be surprised. Sabi mo, saan galing yan? Parang ang natutunan ko po from my tax one, assuming na may natutunan tayo or may naaalala pa, that MCIT is computed at 2% of gross income. Again, kung yun yung naaalala mo, correct naman yan. Kung may iba ka pang naaalala, kalimutan mo na yun. Pero, ang MCIT originally ay 2% of before the amendment, is computed at 2% of gross income. Again, pursuant to the mandatory provisions of the train law, the MCIP is now reduced from 2% to 1%. Per. 1% na siya ngayon. 1% difference lang naman niya. And no, you compute the regular corporate income tax and then the minimum corporate income tax, you choose the amount which, which is higher. 
and that is the tax uh, due of that particular corporation. We have to remind ourselves that the minimum corporate income tax not applicable for the first three years from the corporate from the uh, dito? start ng buhay ng corporation. So actually, medyo magulo nga yung statement na dyan. But for the first three or four, actually four na siya, kasi may unang taon, bibilangan mo yung three years from the first year. So meron kang total of four years, no? Kung saan wala kang MCIT. Uh, Doon ka lang sa regular corporate income tax. Effectively, pang limang taon yung MCIT. You should have known that in your uh, tax one. So yung MCIT mo, this amount, yung gross income, will have to be multiplied by 1%. While to compete for the tax for the regular corporate income tax, yung nasa baba na taxable net income, you multiply by 20% or by 25%. Depending uh, doon sa amount of net income or asset and assets rather. Yan. So compute in mo, regular corporate income tax, uh, minimum corporate income tax, whichever is higher between the two. Yun yung magiging tax liability ng no? corporation. Yun yung income tax liability niya. Okay. Now, bakit paras lang ng partnership? Kasi by definition, a partnership uh, is considered as a corporation for tax purposes. For tax purposes. Siyempre, in reality, hindi. You have, uh, you can just listen, if you listen or watch yung previous lecture video natin, Alam natin na magkaibang magkaiba ang partnership at ang corporation. But for tax purposes, ang partnership ay tax just like a corporation. So, kaya kung mapapansin ninyo kung ano yung tax na nakasulat sa third column natin, yun din yung tax consequences natin for a partnership. But I hopefully, no, hopefully naaalala ninyo na may mga klase ng partnership na hindi tinataksan like a corporation because these partnerships are exempt from taxation. So, if you, if you recall, ang uri ng partnership na yan ay correct, no? General Professional Partnership. So, yung mga GPP. Kung yung partnership mo ay General Professional Partnership, then you don't have to uh, consider itong mga tax imposed on corporations because under our National Internal Revenue Code, ang mga general professional partnership ay exempt from income tax, regular corporate income tax. So other than the general professional partnership, wala nang ibang uri pa ng partnership na nag -e enjoy ng tax exemption. So all other partnerships are subject to the tax imposed on corporations. Okay. Now, for sole proprietorship, ito naman ay um, i-tax option na inintroduce ng train law. Not by the create law, but by the train law. Anong sabi ng train law? Kung ang gross sales or gross receipts down ng isang individual taxpayer ay hindi lalagpas ng 3 million at siya ay but registered maaari siyang mamili sa dalawang system of income taxation. May option siya. So kung anong gusto niya, yun yung masusunod. Now, bilang tax uh, manager or bilang tax consultant, papasok ka, papasok ka ngayon sa istorya. Now, you have to give the proper advice kung saan siya magbe-benefit. Uh, Doon ba sa regular income tax na 0 to 35% computed based on taxable net income? Or the optional tax region of, of 8% computed based on gross sales or gross receipts? Um, I have to annotate. Uh, kailangan natin i-clear na yung 8% na yan ay mag apply lamang in excess of 250,000. And also, no, and also, uh, 
mabaya pa pala. Mamaya pa pala yung, mga, ano, yung ibang effect niya. Let us concentrate on income tax na lang yun. So, yun yung pagpipilian niya. Eh, papaano ko to, paano ko, ano to, ma-analyze tong gantong klaseng uh, choice. Titignan mo ngayon, dito sa regular income tax natin, uh, actually, yung zero na yan, yung zero na yan, pertains to the first 250 din. But this time, 250 of the taxable net income. You know, 250 of the gross sales or gross receipts. Yan. Baka, mag, baka magkagulo tayo. Uh, again, hopefully you have learned this in detail sa uh, income taxation natin. Okay. I'm, I'm concerned, pero sige. Tuloy natin. Ulit. So then, if you will choose the regular income tax, kasi yung regular income tax natin, yan ay progressive. So meron siyang table. So yung first line ng table mo ay zero. Yung taxable net income yung measure dito. Ha? If the taxable net income ay zero to 250,000, then that individual taxpayer is exempt from tax. And then meron siyang progression, 250,000 to a certain amount. I don't, I'm not really, hindi uh, ko talaga siya kabisado. You start at 20%. And then you have yung next, ano, yung next natin na Uh, tawag dito. Threshold to another threshold, mas mataas siya ngayon. So, para hindi tayo nanguhula dito, uh, let us pull out yung ating tax, uh, tawag dito, yung ating train do. So, projected on the screen is a copy of Republic Act 10963 or the train do. Mm -hmm. Ayan, train ito yung ating and a mandatory provision. Sige, sino sabi ko? 250 not oh, 0 to 250 is 0%. 250 to 420% of the end of, of the excess over 250 over 400 and but not over 830,000 plus 25% of the excess over 400,000 and then so on and so forth. This one is computed based on taxable net income. So medyo matataas yung rate niya, pero it's taxable net income. Ibig sabihin, you're allowed to claim yung deductions. Pero essentially, hanggang dito lang tayo. Sa analysis mo, kasi ang, ang nasa portion pa lang tayo ngayon, nang hindi lumalagpas ng 3 million. Uh, but yung 3 million na yan ay gross sales or gross receipts. Itong mga to, ay taxable net income. But on the assumption na lang, on the very, very far assumption na wala kang, walang ginastos yung taxpayer na any form of expense, then the, the at most ay mapupunta ka dito sa line na ito. Yan, dito ka mapupunta sa line na yan. But, that, but it is very highly unlikely that the taxpayer will not be incurring any expense in order to generate revenue. Diba kaya nga tayo merong matching principle kasi yung mga revenue na gina-generate mo ay nagmula doon sa expense na iyong ginastos. And since we are here, no? And we are on the topic also on anticipation, tama ba? Nasa anticipating, anticipating tayo. Oh, ito, ito yung lagi kong binabanggit na sa discussion natin. Nasa batas yung anticipation. We don't have to to be a manghuhula para meron kang ma-contribute on anticipation. Itong tax schedule na ito will run only from January 1, 2018, yung effectivity date ng train law, until December 31, 2022, which is until next year. So part ng advice mo doon sa iyong ano, uh, client ay yung tax consequences after December 31, 2022. Kasi hindi ka pwede magbigay ng advice ngayon 
for example, you are talking to your client ngayon, 2021, on the, and you are making the erroneous assumption na continuous lang yan. Maaaring continuous, pwedeng i-insist ng client mo, hindi ganito lang talaga yung magiging status ng aking operation for the next five years. So, even if ganun yung sabihin niya, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, ah, same lang din yung tax consequences niyan. Hindi. Because sa train law itself, tells us na hindi yun yung mangyayari. Until January 31, 2022, ito siya. But January, January 1, 2023 onwards, ito na ngayon siya. Mag-iiba siya. Although yung first line parehas lang, oh, not over 250 of the taxable net income, zero. Yung pangalawang line mo, iba na agad. Diba? Ngayon, ang, ang effective rate natin for taxable net income, which is over 200,000 but not over 400, is 20%. Ito, 15% na lang. So it, it will make a, ano, it will really make a difference. Yung 5% na yan is very, although sabihin mo, 5% na naman, it does not matter. It will add value to the company, yung 5% na yun. It can be used to pay for your obligations. It can be used to, it can be invested in marketable security. So, kikita dapat yan. If you feel to consider that, eh, hindi niya ma- hindi, or, hindi niya mailalagay yan sa kanyang plano. Kasi hindi mo binanggit na ah, I have to inform you that effective January 1, 2023. Ganto na lang yung tax rate natin. Eh what if mas mataas pa? So dito sa 400 to 800, 30 yung basic tax naging 22,500. That's already a difference of 7,500. And then, 5% in the excess of 400,000. Malaki na yun. Eh, lalo pa dito, third line, fourth line. Uh, you have to consider that. Yung ano na yan. That's part of your anticipating. Yan. You cannot presume na kung ano yung tax ngayon will be the tax forever or for the next 5 or 10 years. Because the law itself provides na hindi siya continuous. <clears throat> okay. Again, ang point natin uli, ba't tayo napunta dito, ba't ba pre-naject to, is to share na ito ay based on taxable net income. Rates of tax on taxable income. It must be taxable net income. Okay. Now, medyo magalaw yung ano natin, yung screen natin. You can, you can ano muna. Let's go to the 8%. If ito yung provision na yun ng trade law. If the total gross sales or gross receipts uh, and other non-operating income do not exceed the VAT threshold, which is 3 million, the risk prescribed under this section shall be 8%. Taxable income, 8%. Income tax based on gross sales or gross receipts. So yun yung pinagkaiba. Although binaba niya yung rate to 8%, pinababa niya to 8%, tinaasan niya naman yung basis for the computation. Nag-compute siya based on gross sales and gross receipts. Not even gross income. Tandaan, not even gross income. Hindi mo, hindi mo ibabawas dito yung cost of goods sold or cost of services. Nasa taas ka ng computation mo. Not based on gross income, but gross sales and gross... So, ito yung pinaka, pinakataas ng financial statements, pinakataas ng income statement mo. Pag nag-compute ka ng... 8%. Mababa yung rate, 8, pero mataas yung basihan. Fix naman ito. But not, but on the, ang tawag ito, but uh, excluding yung first 250,000. Uh, binanggit niya ba dito? Hindi. Oh, wala. Pero yun yung nasa RR, nasa revenue regulation. Nakalagi doon that the first 250,000 will not be subject to 8%. So first 250 exempt. First 250 of the gross sales or gross receipts exempt. So for example, uh, uh, pause uli natin to. So for example, uh, clear natin to ha. Punta tayo sa pinakadulo nung assumption, which is 3 million. That's the maximum eh. Kung ang kanyang gross sales 
or gross receipts ay hindi lalagpas ng 3 million, which is, ang gagawin na natin ay 3 million. Yung taxpayer mo has this option to be taxed at 8% or 0 to 35%. Now, let us uh, give an example muna na meron siyang cost of goods sold na 1 million and operating expenses na five, uh, 700,000. If that is the case, ang kanyang taxable net income will be syempre kailangan natin ng tulong dito 3 million minus 1 million minus 700,000 will give us 1 million 300. If ang pipiliin niya ay 8%, saka mag-compute ito sa taas. So, kung dito ka, mag, mag, kung ang tax na ipipiliin niya ay yung 8% optional tax regime, yung first 250,000 will not be taxable, and then you multiply that by 8%. Kung ito yung pipiliin niya, 220,000 yung tax na babayaran. Okay. Kung dito siya sa baba pipili, ito, ito yung pipiliin niya, yung 0 to 35% based on taxable net income, 1,300,000 will be lang. So you can ano, scroll back para meron kayong kopya no? nasa part ng lecture video na to yung tax table. So 1,300,000 minus 800,000 uh, multiplied by 30% and then plus uh, 130,000. That will give a taxable, uh, tax due rather, uh, tax liability in the amount of 280,000. So there is a 60,000 difference. So kung income tax lang, kung mag-concentrate ka lang sa income tax, kung, kung yun lang yung tanong, then it is much better that the, tawag dito, the taxpayer be tax based on 8% on gross income. Diba? Pero we will learn later on that you don't stop there. Na hindi lang yan ang consideration natin. If for example, ang estimated niya na cost of goods sold is not 1 million but 2 million, that will uh, reduce yung kanyang taxable net income to 300,000. So in that case, hindi magbabago yung estimated amount of uh, tax mo computed based on gross sales kasi 220 talaga siya. Itong 300,000 mo will give you a tax liability in the amount of uh, minus 250 multiplied by 20%. 10,000 lang. If that is the estimate. So fluid ito. It's not always the case na dapat 8% siya or dapat taxable net income siya, 30, 0 to 35%. Depende yan. No? Palaging depende sa situation. Okay? So this time, ang magiging advice mo na kung ang sabi ng client mo, ang, ang estimated cost of goods, goods sold ko ay 2 million, so ang taxable net income ko ay magiging 300,000 na lang, then ang tax due niya in that case will be 10,000, which is much lower than the 220,000 computed gross sales or gross receipts based on uh, the trade law using the 8% uh, optional tax regime. Again, that was computed by deducting first the 250,000 exempt portion and then multiplying it by 8%, 220,000. Okay? Uh, Ma-point ma out ko lang, baka magkalito-lito tayo dito, in case of a partnership or, or corporation, the 1% minimum corporate income tax is not computed based on gross sales or gross receipts but gross income. Meaning, you are allowed to deduct yung cost of goods sold from the gross sales before computing the tax the uh, minimum corporate income tax. So in this case, kung ito yung kanyang, kung ito yung kanyang ano, information, 
you have 3 million groceries, groceries, meron siyang cost of goods sold. Then meron siyang 2 million na gross income, you multiply that by 1%, that will give you a minimum corporate income tax of 20,000. Then if you will go further down the computation, 3 million minus 1 million minus 700,000, 1 million 300. So let us uh, assume that entitled siya sa mas mababang rate na 20%, 260 yun. O yun yung mas mababa pa lang yun na, 260. Kung tataasan mo pa, syempre, obviously, kung 25%, mas mataas yun. Sa so, ang point lang dito, hindi niya magiging liability yung 20,000. Kasi for corporations and partnership, ang pinipili natin ay yung mas mataas na liability o yung mas mataas na tax due. Dito sa sole proprietorship, syempre you will give the advice na dun po tayo sa 8% or dun po tayo 0 to 35%. Kasi meron po tayong pwedeng pagpilian. And as your advisor, I will advise kung income tax lang po ang pagtutuunan natin ng atensyon, dun po tayo sa 1% or dun sa sa 8% kasi doon po mas mababa ang income tax ninyo. Again, ulit, um, hindi tayo titigil dito kasi meron pa tayong ibang consideration pagdating dyan. Okay? <clears throat> Hopefully, naiintindihan natin itong mga pinag-uusapan dito. Next. Next situation Next situation, income tax pa rin, but this time, lumagpas siya ng 3 million or iniisip niya na lalagpas siya ng 3 million in any 12-month period o kaya naman, but registered siya. Hindi required na parehas mo mamit. Sapat na yung isa dyan. Kung lumagpas ka ng 3 million kahit hindi ka but registered, this, this principle will apply. If you are but registered, even if hindi ka lumalagpas ng 3 million, these principles will apply. Okay? So for income taxation, sa partnership and corporation, it does not matter. It will remain the same. So, wait lang. But the wala in 20 or 20 or 25. It should be 20 or 25. Andun pa rin yung 20. Hindi dapat mawala yung 20. Again, yung 20 or 25 ang options mo dyan. Titignan mo yung net income which will which should not exceed 5 million. Eh, 3 million lang naman na pinag-uusapan natin. Tapos, maaari siyang pumasok dyan. At uh, assets of not exceeding 100 million. Eh, we don't have information naman regarding this. So, hindi natin pwedeng eliminate yung possibility na maging liable siya dun sa 20% since ang threshold na natin ay 3 million. And this one is even gross sales. Pwede pa siya magbawas ng cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Uh, reducing it further below the 5 million threshold or even the 3 million amount na dito. So same lang yan. So kung ano yung nandito ang discussion kanina, we'll have to be the same here. Yung impact ay, yung impact ay nasa sole proprietorship talaga, nasa individual taxpayer talaga yan. Anong meron? Dahil lumagpas siya ng 3 million or dahil what registered siya, hindi niya na pwedeng piliin yung 8%. Hindi na available sa kanya yung optional tax regime na 8%. Nawawala siya. So automatic ang kanyang tax liability kapag lumagpas siya ng 3 million gross sales or gross sales within in any, in any 12-month period or siya ay VAT registered taxpayer kahit hindi siya lumagpas ng 3 million. Ang kanyang tax income tax liability will only be 0 to 35% computed based on the taxable net. Uh, yung table na pinakita natin on the train though, provided by the train though, with your ability to anticipate. Okay, yung discussion doon. Ang point being is that 
wala na siyang option to be taxed at the 8% special tax regime. Disqualified siya from doing so. And I would also like to take this opportunity that if a taxpayer is earning both saka na lang, sa dulo na lang para dito na lilito. I will not take the opportunity. <laughs> Next time na lang. Okay. Now, let's go here kasi medyo maging mix-mix siya. We are now on the business tax aspect. Diba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, we cannot stop at income taxation. Uh, maaring uh, beneficial siya pagdating kung income tax lang ang pag-uusapan or you will limit your advice sa income tax. But syempre hindi hindi valuable yung input mo if you will just be concentrating on income tax. Unless yun lang yung assign sa'yo. Di ba, team kayo, tapos ang in-assign sa'yo income tax, then so be it. You have to concentrate on income tax. But bilang tax manager no, or uh, strategic tax manager or consultant, you have to give valuable advice. No, I have discussed this during the discussion on Savon. Dapat holistic yung approach. Na hindi pwedeng, ah, ano ta, ano to, ah, tama tong advice ko, mag ano ka, mag uh, sole proprietorship ka, tapos piliin mo yung 8% kasi yun yung beneficial. Eh, meron pa palang ibang tax liability involved because you chose that. ba? Diba? So, iparehas niyang may incur yan. Unless you, you can say na exempt talaga siya from business tax kasi yung nature ng business niya ay exempt from business tax. Pero kung hindi, you have to give this advice. Okay. We also have that um, tawag dito, resumption or conditions. Yung threshold amount na 3 million at yung registration niya as non-VA taxpayer. And ito, kailangan sabay mangyari hindi lumagpas ng 3 million at hindi siya uh, at hindi siya VAT taxpayer meaning non VAT taxpayer siya. So kung sakali na hindi lumalagpas siya hindi siya lumalagpas ng 3 million at non VAT taxpayer siya what will happen? Liable siya for the 1% percentage tax under section 116. Now you tatanungin mo ko ngayon, 1% may ganun ba 1% percentage tax under Section 116, parang last sem lang to. Ah. Alam ko mahina ang memorya ko, pero naaalala ko hindi 1% ito, 3% ito. O kung yun naaalala mo, correct ka. No, kasi ang percentage tax before under Section 116 ay 3%, not 1%. Kung naaalala mo 2%, oh, iba na naman yung oh, mali iyan. Walang 2% percentage tax under Section 116. 1% siya ngayon, pursuant to an amendatory provision again of the create law no, not not by the train law create ang nagpababa ng percentage tax from 3% to 1% or oh, dito na papasok yung kwenta mo or exempt siya from percentage tax if ang pipiliin niya sa income tax ay yung 8% optional income tax regime Huh? Ano daw? Uh, going back to this one, di ba kapag hindi ka lumagpas ng 3 million at ikaw ay non-VAT taxpayer, for income tax purposes, income tax ang pag-uusapan mo, you have these options. Pwede kang maging, tax, pwede kang maging taxable using the 0 to 35% taxable net income progressive. Habang tumataas yung taxable net income mo, tumataas din yung tax rate at yung tax base. O kaya naman, available sa iyo yung option na maging taxable at the rate of 8% mababa, 8%, pero mataas ngayon yung base niya. Gross sales siya, gross receipts. Walang deduction for cost of goods sold and operating expenses. Yung taxable net income meron. Diba? So papasok ngayon yung, ano mo, yung computation mo, yung, yung comparison mo. And we have indeed presented, ay, nakapaskill pa nga ngayon sa slide natin. Yung, at, yung ating sample comparison. <clears throat> to prove that it's not always the case na more beneficial ang one choice over the other. It's always a case-to-case -case basis. You have to compute every time. You are presented with this kind of uh, anong more beneficial 
for purposes of income tax. Pero we have learned that we are not limited by our choice sa income tax. Kasi tatalon ka ngayon dito sa business tax. Kung saan, kung ang pipiliin mo doon sa income tax ay yung 0 to 35%, ang tax mo ay 1% percentage tax under Section 116. Pero kung ang pipiliin mo ay yung 8% tax regime, exempt ka. So hindi ka magbabayad noong 1% na yan. Ang babayaran mo lang talaga ay yung 8% under income tax. Exempt ka ngayon sa business tax. Wala kang babayaran na 1%. You might think na, 1% lang pala. Eh, I don't care. Again, uh, in strategic tax management, no amount is too small. Magagamit at magagamit ng 1% na yun. What if yan lang pala yung kailangan niya para makakompleto siya ng amortization niya ng utang para pasweduhin yung isang uh, empleyado para mabili niya yung, yung isang grip ng bad paper na kailangan-kailangan niya na. If you fail to consider that, oh, sayang naman yung 1% na yan. Even if 1% lang talaga siya. So dito, kung magiging holistic yung approach mo, for example, andito ka, di ba kanina ang sabi natin, 220 dito, 280. Di ba? So parang ang ano mo, o dito siya sa 220. Magkano yung benefit? So sabihin mo, 60,000. Correct yun. Kung 60,000 lang, at ang tanong ay income tax. Pero hindi ka dapat tumigil dyan. Bakit? Kasi bukod doon sa 60,000 na natipid niya for income na, na difference dito for income tax, yung 1% ng 3 million natipid din niya. Yung 1% ng 3 million natipid din niya. Well, ano yung 1%? Ba't nakasulat yung 1% dito? Ah, MCIT. O hindi MCIT. Yan yung 1% ng 3 million which is 30,000 tama ba yung computation ko? 30,000 will also form part of your uh, tax savings. Diba? Piliin mo po yung 8% kasi kung pipiliin niyo po yung 8%, <clears throat> una, compared doon sa 0 to 35%, ang income tax niyo, 220 lang. Eh, imbis sa 280, you have saved already 60,000. But on top of that, no, kung pipiliin niyo yung 8% na tax regime, for purposes of percentage tax, you are exempt. You are free from paying at least 30,000, or actually at, at, at most 30,000. A total tax, tax savings of 90,000. So pag tinanong ka sa examination, magkano tax savings niya kung pipiliin niya itong, uh, actually, hindi ganun yung tanong. Alam dapat yung PDN? The regular or the 8%? O, kung sasabihin mo, tas magkano yung tipid niya? kung ano yung mapipili niya. Sabi mo, regular income tax, dapat piliin dahil makakatipid siya by 50,000. Or letter B, 8% ang dapat piliin, makakatipid siya ng 60. Or letter C, 8% makakatipid siya ng 90. That is the correct answer. 90 matitipid niya, 60,000 on income tax and 30,000 on percentage tax. Kasi exempt ka if you will be taxed under the 8% optional income tax regime. So it follows dito na exempt ka. Okay? For partnership and corporations, you don't have that option. You will be liable for 1% percentage tax under Section 116. Again, upon the condition that your gross use or grosses will not exceed 3 million in any 12-month period and the taxpayer, that partnership or that corporation, is registered as a non bat taxpayer. Next slide. Okay. So, what if ang projected more actual grosses or grosses mo ay lumagpas ng 3 million? O kaya naman, what registered taxpayer ka kahit hindi ka lumalagpas ng 3 million? What are the effects? Actually, wala masyado. Distinction among the three. So, walang, walang bearing ito sa iyong decision making. Kung pare-parehas lang naman pala din, walang kwenta. Mamili over the other. In so far as this, ano ah, is this uh, portion is concerned. Siyempre, ito, pwede mo nang i-disregard ito. Siyempre, lilipat ka ngayon ng other aspect. O baka sa income tax, mas makakatipid dito, etc., etc. Okay? So kapag ikaw ay lumagpas ng 3 million or ikaw ay, ay bat-registered taxpayer kahit 
hindi ka lumagpas ng 3 million, since pinili mo na mag-register under the VAT system, you will be liable for value-added tax either at the rate of 12% or 0%. When we say 12%, um, generally, this pertains to domestic transactions while 0% tax pertains to at uh, 0% VAT pertains to exportation and other uh, cross-boundary transaction. If you need help, no, dyan sa C12 and 0%, actually naka-upload yung mga videos ko for last sem. Meron dong discussion on zero rating. Uh, meron discussion on exempt. 12% VAT, 0% VAT, output tax, input tax, if you have the time. If you need help yan sa discussion, sa ano yan, understanding ng 12 and 0%, andun lahat yan. But in the meantime, I cannot again, I do not have that of uh, the luxury of time to discuss in detail. In fact, hindi naman yun yung point ng strategic tax management. Again, nag-arise na naman yung presumption that you have learned that in tax 2. Okay. So, 12 for domestic transactions, 0% for exportation and other um, pangalan nito, and other cross-border transactions. Which, again, for strategic tax management purposes, ay hindi naman nag-iiba in choosing an entity. Ayan yung subject matter natin. Eh. So let us concentrate on that muna. For purposes of choosing an entity, if the taxpayer uh, pro projected his or her gross income, or uh, not gross income, grosses or grosses is um, to, to exceed 3 million, or it has actually exceeded 3 million, or that taxpayer is a VAT registered taxpayer, so wala masyadong, actually wala talagang distinction for VAT purposes. So that's it, no? <clears throat> For income tax and business tax. If you have, uh, if you need further clarification on this one, you can, wala pang naging message doon. No? Ewan ko kung nasa shy ba kayo doon sa ating, ano, for, sa ating MS Teams na, ano, na Teams, no? Sa classroom natin sa MS Teams. But, or it's either na intindihan talaga ninyo, you don't have any question. Now let us go, let's move to another topic in uh, tax consideration on passive income. On passive income. Uh, <clears throat> I, I will have to, I know, to, uh, dito, in, to, lo, ano lang to, 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 gloss over, na ano lang siya, mabilisan lang siya. I cannot have, uh, again, the, the, the detailed discussion on kailan nagkakaroon ng final income tax? Paano nangyayari yung final income tax? Yan. Pero isashare ko sa inyo na for there to be final income tax, dapat yung mga income items na pag-uusapan natin ay income items from sources within the Philippines. Yan lang naman yung isa sa mga importante. And yung mga rates na yan, kung meron kayong rates na makikita, should be computed based on gross amount. Yan, gross amount dapat. Never tayo nag-compute ng final income tax on net amount. It's always computed based on gross amount. And then, final income tax should always be withheld. Now, the collection of final income tax is through the process of withholding. That is why, interchangeably, during the discussion of final income tax, nababanggit ang final withholding tax. Correct din naman yun. Kasi final income tax can only be collected, uh, collected by the government through the process of withholding. Kaya it is uh, usually repeatedly referred to as final withholding tax. So ito, yung first few slides natin will discuss or enumerate yung mga final income tax and passive income. And when we say passive income, we pertain to income items where the taxpayer uh, will not, uh, is not required to, uh, be actively to be actively participating in the generation of revenue. Hindi niya kailangan maggagawa ng kung ano para makapag-generate ng revenue. Maghihintay lang siya. 
maghihintay lang siya. For example, ito, interest on bank deposit, iwan mo lang yung pera mo, although this is not this is not advisable, pero para lang maintindahan niyo yung proseso, iwan mo yung pera mo in a bank account, it will earn interest even you, no, the, the depositor, not doing anything. Wala ka namang gagawin, hintayin mo lang. Same so, nature ng passive income. Uh, dividends from bank, uh, from corporations, di ba? Mag, mag-invest ka lang in a corporation. And, and as a stockholder, you are entitled to receive dividends. So, hintay ka lang. Passive income tawag dyan. So, first item natin, passive income, may interest on bank deposit, uh, yield on deposit substitute, money market placement, trust fund, and other similar transactions or arrangements, including government bonds, treasury bills, and bonds. Yan. So, wala namang distinction. Dito tinanggal ko na yung column for partnership, no? Kasi nga, um, parehas lang naman yung partnership siya corporation for tax purposes. So, dito, walang pinagkaiba, 20% final income tax will be imposed. So, uh, regardless, it will not affect your decision-making uh, strategy. Kasi whether you are a sole proprietorship or, or, or a corporation, if you expect that you will be earning interest on bank deposit, so whatever it is na makipagpilian niya as an entity, hindi magbabago yung final income tax on interest on bank deposit. Kasi 12%, 20% yan kahit ano pang piliin niya. Next, interest on foreign currency deposit. These are deposits which are denominated in foreign currency. Kaya nga siya tinawag na foreign currency deposit. Yan, final income tax at the rate of 15%, but uh, we do not impose this kind of tax on non-resident. So whether you are a corporation, an individual, a resident, a citizen, an alien, uh, a resident, a resident, a non-resident, and no, ulit, walang final income tax na 15% on foreign currency deposit kapag non-resident ka, whether you are an individual or a corporation whether you are a citizen or an alien, whether you are engaged or not engaged. No? As long as non-resident ka, ayan, NR, yung first two letters ng classification mo, you are exempt from the imposition of 15% final income tax on your interest on foreign currency deposit. So again, same lang siya. It will not really affect your decision-making process. Dito, mag-iiba na siya. Interest on long-term deposit. Kung individual yung taxpayer, then exempt yan. If corporation yan, subject to regular income tax. So, yan, maybe a point of your um, analysis or of your ano, um, advice. And then you have interest on pre-terminated long-term deposit. So, dito, di ba meron kang long-term deposit sa previous slide? Ang sabi natin, the maturity period is not less than five years. So it, is ex it will exceed five years. Para ma-enjoy mo exemption, dapat hintayin mo yung five-year period na yan before you withdraw your, your long-term deposit together with the interest. But in case you will not be able to do so, hindi pa nakakarating na sa ikalimang taon, we need draw mo na siya. So that is a pre-terminated long-term deposit. But for this to apply, dapat yung original period mo ay not, ex not less than five years. So dapat ang original mo not less than five years and then pre-determinate mo siya. And then you have this uh, iba't ibang rate depende kung kailan ka nag-determinate. Nag-determinate ka, umabot ng ika-apat na taon pero hindi, lumag, hindi umabot ng ikalimang taon. Umabot ng ikatatlo pero hindi umabot ng ikaapat. Or hindi man lang umabot ng ikatatlong taon pre-determinate mo na yung long-term deposit mo. So, depende kung gaano katagal yan, ang point dito, habang tumatagal, yung holding period mo, lumiliit yung tax, which is, again, a point for strategic tax management. You have this client saying na kailangan ko na yung long-term deposit ko. Kailangan, kailangan ko na siya. Okay. Kung nasa, kung nasa ano siya, kung nasa pagitan siya, Nasa pagitan siya. You can advise your client, hintayin mo na lang ng tatlong araw. No, kasi pag tatlong araw, it will now be the fourth year of your long-term deposit. 5% na lang yung final income tax mo. 
that's a difference of 7%. Eh kung kailangan kailangan mo talaga yung pera, 'di ba? Might as well wait for three more days para uh, bumasok ka doon sa 5% final income tax or kunyari nandito siya sa pagitan na to. That's a difference of 8%. 'Di ba? O kung or isang linggo na lang ni hintayin natin, hintayin mo na para lumagpas ka ng ikat- ikatatlong taon. Kasi kung hindi ka lalagpas ng ikatatlong taon, 20% final income tax. And in one week time, in one week's time, lalagpas ka na ng tatlong taon. So in that case, 12% na lang. So might as well wait. O ganun yung magiging advice mo. So, wag mong wag kang magmadali. No? Alas talagang life and death situation yan, what is 8% and 7% kung buhay naman ang pinag-uusapan. Huwag mo siyang pigilan kung kailangan niya na talaga. Pero nonetheless, no? kung hindi naman ganun ka-urgent o ganun yung situation, life and death situation, then give this sound advice. No? Baka sabihin pa nga, hintayin mo, kunyari, nandito na siya, hintayin mo na, ano na lang naman eh, ano na lang, one month na lang naman eh, talagpas ka na ng limang taon. O anong effect kapag lagpas ka na ng limang taon? Exempt na yan. Wala kang tax na babayaran. So, di ba? And also, you have also to consider na kapag nag-preterminate ka, may charges yan. But the bank will impose of pre-termination charges. Depende pa sa bank ko yun. 1,000 or 5,000 pag nag-preterminate ka. Siyempre, you have to consider that. O, o nga, baka nga mas mababa yung tax rate. Pero ganito naman yung amount na babayaran ko for pre-termination, etc., etc. Okay? Now, for corporations, kapag nag-preterminate ka ng long-term deposit mo, it will all be subject to 20% final income tax regardless of the period. Kasi mga advice natin kanina, walang kwenta yon. Yung paghihintay, paghihintay, wala. <clears throat> Kasi kahit anong hintay niya, 20%. Again, if hindi siya aabot ng ikalimang taon, which is at the rate of regular income tax of, again, 20 or 25. 20 or 25. <clears throat> Now, let's go to dividends. Yan. Dividends from domestic corporation, uh, 10% final income tax for RC and RCRA. For non-resident alien engaged, 20% final income tax. For non-resident alien not engaged, 25% final income tax. Ito ngayon yung makikita mong importante. If you will put up a domestic corporation and you will receive a do- dividend from domestic corporations, then exempt yan. I hope na aalala niyo yan from your tax one. President foreign corporations will also be enjoying the same exemption. If you are non-resident foreign corporation, you will be imposed 15% final income tax. Again, this one, are divid- itong line na to ay dividends from domestic corporations. So, ang, ito yung importante dyan. Pero kung yan, kung ang dividends ay manggagaling sa foreign corporations at yan ay from sources within the Philippines, regular income tax will be imposed. Wala masyadong point for comparison kasi same lang naman. Although we learn naman din na ang regular income tax ng sole proprietorship ay 0 to 35% while the regular income tax for corporate taxpayers ay 20% or 25%. No, medyo ano rin naman. Meron din naman point for comparison kahit pa paano. Pero kung ang tanong lang naman, anong klaseng tax, then the regular income tax will be your answer. Dividends from foreign corporation, sources without the Philippines, then if you are RC, subject to regular income tax. If you are not RC, meaning if you are a non-resident citizen, resident alien, non-resident alien engaged, or non-resident alien not engaged, you are exempt from taxation because... Kung hindi ka naman RC, you are taxable only under income from sources within the Philippines. If that dividend is from sources outside the Philippines, then you are exempt from taxation. Then for corporate taxpayers, those who are domestic corporations will be subject to the regular income tax rate of 20 or 25, depending kung anong amount ng ano nila, net income nila at ng asset. Kung hindi ka domestic corporation, meaning you are a resident foreign corporation or a non-resident foreign corporation, you are exempt from tax because you are taxable only on your income from sources within the Philippines. 
And then for stock dividends, you are exempt from tax because stock dividends are not income in the first place. So you cannot impose a tax on stock dividends. Okay? <clears throat> Kung hindi nyo nag-gets, no? kung hindi nyo naaalala rather yung lesson on income taxation, nakinig na lang ulit. So for royalties, yan, regular royalties are subject to 20% final income tax. So wala masyadong point for comparison there. But if the royalty is arising from books, literary works, and musical compositions, 10% final income tax for sole proprietorship and 20% final income tax for corporate taxpayer. So Medyo malaki rin yung diferensya, 10%. Now, for prices and winnings. Uh, prices not exceeding 10,000, regular income tax for sole proprietorship and also for corporation. Ten, ano, ganun din naman. Prices exceeding 10,000, 20% final income tax for sole proprietorship, regular income tax pa rin for corporate taxpayers. Winnings, regardless of the amount, so kahit magkano pa yan, 20% final income tax for sole proprietorship and then regular income tax pa rin siya for corporate taxpayers. And then you have PCS winnings. Corporations are not allowed naman. Hindi naman sila pwedeng tumaya sa loto. Kaya wala sila dyan. If ang napanalunan mo sa loto ay hindi lumagpas ng 10,000, you are exempt from income tax. Kung lalagpas ng 10,000, 20% final income tax will be imposed. Merong balato ang gobyerno. And then you have informer reward, which is 10% final income tax, whether individual or corporate and tax payer. So, wala masyadong point for comparison. Now, for final income tax naman, this one on uh, capital gains. Yan, capital gains tax. Medyo bulky yung discussion dito no, sa tax one. <clears throat> so, meron tayong dalawang properties if classified as capital assets ay nagigive rise to the liability or the obligation to pay final income tax on capital gains or mas kilala ninyo sa tawag na capital gains tax. Sa so, ano yung mga properties na yan? You have real properties. In so far as corporations are concerned, ang tawag dyan, ang ano lang dyan, land and building. No? Hindi lahat ng real properties ay covered kapag corporation. Limited lang to land and building. And shares of stock issued by domestic corporations which are not listed or traded in the local stock exchange. Actually, for final in for capital gains tax, wala masyadong distinction. Ano? For sole proprietorship, you have 6% final income tax or capital gains tax, which is computed based on the selling price or the fair market value, whichever is higher. Hopefully, you recall this one from your tax one. Same goes with corporations, 6% pa rin naman siya. Final income tax or the capital gains tax, still computed on the selling price or the fair market value, whichever is higher. If ang pinag-uusapan ay final income tax on capital gains, you have final income 15%, final income tax on net capital gains. Ganon din naman for corporations. 15% final income tax on net capital gains. Point of distinction lang sa dalawang act. Dapat natutunan nyo ito on tax sa tax one eh. Point of comparison lang sa dalawang final income tax na ito or capital gains tax. Kapag real properties ang pinag-uusapan, ang, ang computation mo ng tax is based on the selling price or the fair market value, not gain or loss. In fact, on the 6% final income tax, hindi nahahanapin kung ikaw ay may gain or loss. Actually, kahit may loss ka pa, o actual loss, no? actual loss, not uh, presume, wala namang presume loss eh. Meron kang actual loss, ipagpapalagay pa rin na ikaw ay merong gain. Yeah. Kaya, six, which is your selling price or the fair market value. So, hindi mo pwedeng idahilan na nalugi ka on the transaction, kaya hindi ka dapat patawan ng 6% final income tax. Papatawan ka pa rin. But on the second kind of final income tax or capital gains tax, yan, Yung 15% yung na yan is computed based on net capital gains. Meaning, you really have to uh, earn a profit dyan sa uh, transaction mo. Kapag nalugi ka on the transaction, wala kang babayaran na 15% capital gains tax or final income tax on shares of stocks. 
Okay, pag real property, ang capital asset mo, whether na lugi ka or, not, or may gain ka on the transaction, you are liable for the 6% final income tax. But in case of uh, shares of stocks, no? um, yung, yung transaction mo dapat resulted into a gain. If lugi ka on the transaction, you are not so liable for final income tax, the 15% final income tax. Okay? If you need further discussion on this one, please send a message. Kung di na maalala yung discussion on this one during your tax time. And then you have fringe benefits. Final income tax and fringe benefits. Ang fringe benefits ay tinatanggap lamang ng mga individual. So, hindi pwede maging liable. Although sila pwedeng mag-remit, dahil ang mga korporasyon ay hindi maaaring kumita ng compensation income, they are not so liable for fringe benefits tax. So yung tax consequence ng fringe benefits ay nakadepende kung ang individual ba ay rank and file or supervisory managerial. In fact, meron tayong separate lesson on this one. At least doon, pwede ko siyang i-discuss in detail. But in passing, no, ang fringe benefits received by rank and file employees are subject to regular income tax 0 to 35%. <clears throat> Sir, pwede po ba yung 8%? Hindi. Hindi pwede yung 8% dyan. Bakit? Ang 8% po ay mag apply lang for business income. Ang fringe benefits ay compensation income. So hindi mo pwede ipataw, ipataw yung 8% dito. Basta compensation income palaging 0 to 35% tax lang ang pwede mong piliin. Hindi mo pwedeng piliin yung 8%. Anyway, fringe benefits received by managerial or supervisory, 35% final income tax or mas kilala nyo siya sa tawag na fringe benefits tax which is computed based on the gross up monetary value of the fringe benefits. Again, I cannot, I, 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 I don't see na kailangan ko siyang i-discuss dito in detail nag a na naman yung presumption ko that you have learned this one. Pero don't worry if you did not understand itong taxation on fringe benefits. We have a separate lecture video to be uploaded discussing these benefits. Before I go to the next topic, <clears throat> okay. ito na talaga yung opportunity. Kanina, sabi natin, sabi natin kanina, kapag for individuals lang ito ah. Kapag hindi lumagpas ng 3 million yung kanyang gross sales, gross receipts, at siya ay non-VAT, siya ay non-VAT, meron siya ngayong option. Ano yung option niya? 0 to 35% based on taxable net income. Or 8% based on gross sales or gross receipts in excess of 250,000 okay 250,000 okay sana naalala niyo yung discussion natin kanina yung 250,000 na yan na ibabawas mo ay nawala na naman na ibabawas mo from the grosses or grosses, bago ka mag-multiply sa 8%, yun yung ginawa natin dito eh. I-atras natin ang konti yung slide natin. Ayan, di ba? Paano natin nakuha yung 220,000 na yan? Ang ginawa natin, 3 million minus 250 multiplied by 8%. So that's 220,000. Ginawa natin yun on the presumption na wala siyang kikita in compensation income. Bakit? Kasi kung siya ay merong compensation income, Kung siya ay merong compensation income, meaning siya ay mixed earner. Meron siyang compensation income at the same time, meron siyang business income or professional income. Ayan. Meron siyang business income plus compensation income, business income. Compensation income, business income. Pinagsama niya. Okay. Kapag ganyan, no? kapag ganyan, yung compensation income will always be subjected to 0 to 35. Kaka-mention ko lang yan during the discussion ng fringe benefits. Hindi niya pwedeng ipataw yung 8% sa compensation income. Because that 8% is only allowed 
to be imposed on business income or professional income if engaged in the practice of profession. What if sabay, I have compensation income and business income at the same time, at yung business income ko ay hindi lumalagpas ng 3 million, tapos nang ba't registered ako? Pwede ba akong mamili ng 8%? Correct, pwede kang mamili ng 8%. Correct yan. Pero, hindi mo na pwedeng ibawas yung 250. Bakit po? Bakit po? Tandaan mo, una, wag mo silang pagkasamahin. Kasi compensation income mo will be imposed with 0 to 35%, which is computed based on taxable net income. While your business income or professional income will be computed based on, at the rate of 8%, based on grosses or grosses. Doon pa lang, sa point na yon, hindi mo sila pwedeng, pwedeng pagsamahin. Kasi taxable net income yung isa, gross sales or grosses yung isa. Pag pinagsama mo yan, labo-labo yung amounts mo. So separate yung tax treatment. Okay, so for example, meron siyang compensation income in the amount of, let's say, 3 million, ah, 5 million, for example, 5 million. At meron siyang business income in the amount of 3 million. O, dahil hindi siya lumagpas ng 3 million, saktong 3 million lang siya, 35 million to. O nga, compensation income yun. Hindi yun kasama sa threshold mo. Pero siyang business income na 3 million lang, then pasok siya. Assuming na non-bat taxpayer siya, pwede niyang piliin yung 8%. Okay. Yung 5 million niya, compensation income. Bawas may mga deductions from compensation income. Ano ba yan? Mga yan. Uh, SS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, uh, Union Jews, yan. Yung mga pwede mong ibawas yan sa 5 million mo. So for example, ang net compensation income niya ay 4 million, after, the, after those deductions, 4 million 800,000. Example lang, no? 4 million 800,000. And then yung 3 million niya will be imposed 8%. Tandaan nyo, yung 4 million 800,000 niya will be computed using the 0 to 35%. And you can go back no, sa ating table, sa ating slide, makikita nyo rin yan. Yung 4 million 800 ay nasa line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yan, nasa 2 million to 8 million siya. Doon ka mag-compute ng tax dyan. I have my, ano, my, my ano, here. Pinicture ako kanina yung <clears throat> tax table. Sa nandun din siya. Nasa 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nasa line number 5 siya. Doon ka magkocompute. You will not compute. Pero if you want, you can compute. Pero anong point ko? Ba't natin kailangan i-pull out uli yung tax table? Kapag nag-compute ka doon sa pinaka lima, pang limang line, essentially, dumaan ka sa first few lines. Simula pinakataas hanggang pinakababa. Ibig sabihin, ginamit mo yung first line din dyan, which is 250,000 exempt from tax. Kahit nasa line 2 ka, exempt pa rin yung first 250. Tingnan nyo yung line 2. Di ba yung 20% niya is computed based on the amount which is in excess of 250. Ba't na tinanggal yung 250? Kasi exempt yung portion na yun. Eh. Kaya na tinanggal. Kapag hanggang 250 ka lang, zero ka. Pag lumagpas ka ng 250 pero hindi ka lumagpas ng 400, yung first 250 exempt, yung tax 20%. And then pag lumagpas ka ng 400, yung first 400 mo may 25%, actually yung mali. Yung first 400 mo ay merong 30,000 na tax and then yung lagpas sa 400,000 ay merong tax na 25%. And so and so forth. Although parang hindi mo maintindihan, nasa yung 250 dyan? Incorporated in the tax table yung 250. So kahit nasaan ka dyan sa tax table na yan, mula sa first line hanggang sa pinakadulo, you are considering that, or you are taking into account the fact that the first 250,000 of the taxable net income is exempt from income tax. Kahit nasaan ka dyan sa table. That being said, kung meron kang, other form of in kung meron kang business income naman on the other hand, at meron kang 8% na tax na yun yung pinili mo, supposedly, yung first 250 ay exempt from tax. Di ba yun yung computation natin kanina? 3 million minus 250 times 8%. We arrive at 220,000. But this time, dahil na-avail mo na yung benefit na yung first 250,000 ay exempt, 
by using the tax table in computing your tax due doon sa compensation income, hindi mo na pwede gamitin pa uli yung 250,000 kapag nag-compute ka ng tax mo naman on the business income. So in that case, itong 3 million mo, wala ng deduction for 250. Diretso na siya ng 8%. Pag kinumpare mo yan sa una nating ano, illustration, 3 million minus 250. Ba't siya nag-minus ang 250? Eh wala naman siyang compensation income. Pero kung meron siyang compensation income, that compensation income will be subjected to the progressive rate. And by using the progressive rate, you are already availing of the 250,000 exemption. So wala ka nang magagamit na exemption for your business income in case you will choose the 8% business tax. O 8% optional tax pala. Okay. I-replay mo kung hindi mo na inindihan pala. And kung hindi mo pala inindihan after replaying three times or four times, please ask the question. Intindihin natin. Now, part of your valuable ang input sa pag-advise mo ay yung layer ng taxation. Okay? Hirap nito, layer daw ng taxation. <clears throat> sa una, wala tayong kailangang isipin. There's no layer of taxation dito. Walang layer of taxation pagdating sa unang sitwasyon. Kasi di ba, we have learned in the previous lecture video that the sole owner of the sole proprietorship is the same. They are one and the same. So there's no layer to speak of. But with respect to partners in a partnership and shareholders in a corporation, we have to consider that layer. Bakit? Okay. Yung partner, o kaya yung at saka, yung shareholder, pagsabayin ko na to. Mali yung pwesto ko. I-clear ko na lang muna. Yan. Pag nagkaroon ng income, yan. papasok yan not directly sa mga partners at sa mga shareholders. Kasi nga di ba meron tayong tinatawag na separate juridical personality. So kung merong income yung partnership, sa partnership muna siya. Kung merong income yung corporation, sa corporation muna siya. Okay. And we have learned so far na yung partnership at yung corporation meron tax na babayaran. Kung hindi mo ma-recall, please go back to the previous slides. Meron dyan. Atras mo ng konti. Diniscuss ko in detail kung ano yung income tax liability ng partnership at ng corporation. Kung ano yung business tax liability niya, ano yung final income tax liability nila. Andyan yan lahat. Sa babayaran niya ng partnership. Babayaran ng corporation. Yan yung first layer of taxation. So from the income nakinita ng partnership or ng corporation minus the taxes na babayaran niya pursuant to our discussion earlier, meron ka ngayon distributable income. Saan ngayon mapupunta ng distributable income na ito? Yan ay mapupunta sa mga partners at sa mga shareholders in case of declaration of dividends. And that distribution of income papunta sa mga partners at sa mga shareholders represents the second layer of taxation. Dahil yung receipt of their share in the distributable income of the partnership or the corporation represents income on their part. At dahil income on their part, that it must be taxable. What kind of tax will be imposed? Yan. What kind of tax? This one ay tax on dividend. So, kung pwede kang umatras ng onte para makita yung tax on dividends, pero pwede ka nang ilagay dito, this one will be subject to final income tax at the rate of 10%. Or if you are ENRA, ENRA, NE, ENRA, E, rather, 20%. If you are ENRA, NE, 25%. So, ganyan yung flow ng layer of taxation. So, you have to consider that. Sabihin nyo, oh, you will put up a partnership. Sa anong mangyayari pag nag-put up kayo ng partnership? O make sure meron po tayong dalawang layer of taxation dito. Meron po kayong babayaran na tax in your capacity as part of the, as, as in your capacity as the partnership. Actually, not in your capacity. Uh, meron po kayong liability for taxation. Yung partnership ay merong liability for taxation at kailangan niyang bayaran niya. And 
once na mabayaran ng partnership yung tax na kailangan niyang bayaran, kung ano po yung may iiwan, will be distributed among the partners and will be treated as distribution of dividends. And under, uh, and under our tax code, ang distribution po ng dividends ay merong tax consequence. 10% po yan. Or, if you are NRA, eh, kung meron pong NRA eh, sa inyo, 20%. Kung may NRA ni po sa inyo, 25%. Yun po. Ibig sabihin, para maalala, para maintindihan ninyo, pinupoint ko dito, kung merong income na kikita inyong partnership, maaari siyang maging liable. Yung partnership pa lang at yung corporation pa lang. Ha? Liable sa 20 or 25% corporate income tax or 1% minimum corporate income tax kung yun yung mas mataas. But on the regular flow of things, 20% yan or 25%. Pero that is only the surface. Kasi after paying that 20 or 25%, may may iwan na portion ng income nila. Diba? This is income after tax. Diba meron kang earnings before income tax and earnings after tax naman. Ito ngayon i-distribute mo sa mga partners or sa mga shareholders by way of dividends. So sa part nila, meron ng 10%. Naman uli, 10% final income tax. So in effect, no? No, meron kang liability for 30% na tax. Although syempre magkaiba ng computation to. Pero ang point being is that layer per layer ang transaction or layer ang taxation. And you have to distinguish between the taxation of the partnership from the taxation ng mga partners. You have to make a distinction sa taxation ng corporation do sa taxation ng mga shareholders na nagko-compose doon sa corporation. Okay. Okay. And then, before I leave this layer of taxation, um, what if GPP yung partnership natin? Uh, discuss lang natin na mabilis yung GPP. If GPP yung partnership, so ano yung layer of taxation? Siyempre, dadaan yung income sa partnership bago siya mapunta sa partners. Diba? Ganun pa rin. Dadaan pa rin, hindi naman diretsyo sa mga partners yung income. Eh. Yung partnership pa rin. Meron pa rin siyang distinct and separate personality. Partnership pa rin siya. So income pa rin siya ng partnership. Pero na this, na I mentioned earlier, although mabilis ko lang binanggit, that the partnership is exempt from tax. So in effect, yung first layer of the layer of taxation is exemption. So madaling tandaan yun. Exempt siya. So if you will be asked, magkano yung babayaran na income tax itong general professional partnership? The quick answer to that is zero. So in effect, lahat ng net income ng, ng partnership from its operations as a general professional partnership, will be distributed among the partners. Unlike in a regular partnership, hindi agad na distribute Kailangan niya muna magbayad ng taxes bago siya mag-distribute among the partners. Pero dahil exempt na ang isang GPP, wala siyang kailangan bayaran from income niya doon sa kanyang operations as a general professional partnership. So mag-distribute mag siya ngayon sa mga partners ng income. Ano ngayon yung tax on the par partners ng isang partnership in a general professional partnership? This one is regular income tax. So medyo magkaiba. Actually, hindi siya medyo. Talaga magkaiba siya. Kapag uh, partner ka in a general professional partnership, the partnership itself is exempt from income tax. And you as a partner, kapag nakareceive ka ng share mo in the net income of that general professional partnership, you are liable for regular income tax, which is 0 to 35% based on your taxable net income. While if you are a partner in a partnership which is not a general professional partnership, that partnership is treated as a corporation and subject to corporate income tax, which is 20% or 25%, depending kung nami-meet niya yung o hindi yung mga requirements. Okay. Kailangan niyang bayaran niyan bago siya makapag-distribute ng dividends sa inyong mga partners. At kapag nag-distribute ng dividends sa inyong mga partners, you are not liable for regular income tax, you are liable for final income tax at the rate of 10% because that distribution of income is treated as distribution of dividends. And since dividends are subjected to 10% final income tax, the distribution of the partner share in the net income of uh, 
a partnership which is not a general professional partnership is also subjected to 10% final income tax unless you are an ENRA A, 20% final income tax or ENRA A, 25% final income tax. Okay, medyo marami tayong pinag-usapan doon. And then this one, again, ano lang to? In passing lang, hindi ko kailangan i-discuss in detail. Since we are in the, ma in the topic of organizing the entity, diba nagsimula pa lang siya eh. Pwede maging part ng advice mo yung possibility na ipasok siya or i-register. Siyempre, hindi na to hindi na to patungkol doon sa form of organization eh. Pero meron kasing ibang paraan para may ma-enjoy ka tax exemption or preferential rate. So for example, barangay micro business enterprise. So ito meron siyang mga qualifications. So for example, yung total assets mo, excluding the value of the property, will not exceed 3 million. Then you can register that uh, partnership, that corporation, or that uh, sole proprietorship as a barangay micro business enterprise. In which case, you will be enjoying uh, exemption from income tax and other non-tax incentive. Marami pang iba dyan. So you, it, you may consider proposing, no? since tinanong kay, ano po bang kailangan kong gawin para, uh, ano po bang kailangan kong pili in partnership, corporation, or sole proprietorship? So, ganito po yung mga ari yung, since nag, nagsimula pa lang kayo ng business, maganda po ito, or ito po, depende po sa strategy ninyo, anong gusto niyo mangyari, 2 years, 5 years, 10 years, 25 years from now. And ganito po, as a proposal, as part of my proposal, since nag-start up pa lang po kayo, you might as well register your, let's say, sole proprietorship as a barangay micro-business enterprise with the DPI para mag-enjoy po kayo ng income tax benefit. Hindi po kayo mag income tax exemption rather. Wala po kayo babayaran ng income tax dyan. Or pwede mong i-propose since nagpo-put up po kayo ng business, might as well register with a special economic zone, with the Philippine Economic Zone Authority. Or... Under the Omnibus Investment Code, meron po tayong Board of Investment. Meron po tayong pwedeng pagpuntahan ng mga investment natin. Or under Section 30 of the Tax Code, exempt po ang mga non-stock non-profit organization. Or if you are engaged in international undertaking, we have this double taxation agreement. Again, these are just part, no? syempre medyo malayo na sa choosing an entity. Pero since you are already giving an advice sa iyong client, no? as part of strategic tax management, as part of your strategy, in the long term, it is also feasible na magbigay ng advice other than uh, yung structure ng kanyang business entity. Okay? Now, oh, baka sabihin natin na we, we have discussed yung S, okay? Anticipation, okay na tayo sa anticipation. Value adding will be the dulo ng ating pag-uusap. Negotiating. How do we negotiate? How do, how do we negotiate dito? <clears throat> okay. So for example, dito, uh, individual taxpayer ka. Actually, may, 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 may ano to, syempre ma personal ito sa mga ano, personal ito sa mga taxpayers. Uh, you might choose, no? you might choose na itong uh, tawag dito, fringe benefit mo. For example, ang employer mo corporation wag na lang siyang i-declare as fringe benefit. Kunyari, managerial ka na eh. Managerial ka na. Meron ka ng skill for, meron ka ng wiggle room for negotiate, negotiating. Supervisory ka na or officer ka na of the corporation. Siyempre, pag rank and file, medyo wala masyadong room for negotiation. Kung managerial ka na or supervisory employee ka na, you can negotiate since 35% final income tax, medyo mataas siya. Why not, no? Why not? Isuhan ka na lang ng uh, share-based share payments na lang. And share-based payments na lang, maisuhan ka ng shares ng company, and later on, declare ka ng dividend. Bigyan nyo na lang ako ng dividend. Bakit? Eh kasi pag final, pag dividend po yan, final income tax, 10% lang. Ang layo niyan, 35% to, 10% lang yan. Considering di naman ako Enra eh o Enra ni. Eh. That's a whopping uh, savings of 25%. So imagine if 1 million yung ipoprovide sa'yo, uh, baka katipid ka ng 250,000. Ang laki nun. Ang laki nun. 
<clears throat> what else? What are what else are available for negotiating? Ito, no? Medyo room siya for negotiating. Uh, you have to negotiate with your ano, actually hindi na siya yung pass on ng tax eh. Na hindi siya pagpapasa ng tax kasi during our discussion on Savan, pagpapasa ng tax yung pinag-uusapan natin. Dito hindi masyado siyang pagpapasa ng tax. But no, uh is a manner of persuasion. Parang ano na lang siya, act of persuasion na lang ito. Eh. Uh, giving an advice to wait and not to wait. Actually more of negotiating. Actually ito but is not really a form uh, dito talaga pumapasok yung negotiation sa value added tax kung sino yung magsosolver ng VAT. Tandaan yung negotiating ay nandoon doon sa mga uri ng tax na pwedeng pagpasapasahan. And VAT is among those. Yung income tax hindi naman talaga yan pinagpapasapasahan. Eh. Personal yan, direct tax yan. Pero itong value added tax, pero siya pagpasapasahan. Pero hindi yun yung naging point of discussion natin. Kasi nga, nung naging liability yung value added tax, whether piliin mo yung sole proprietorship partnership or, cor or corporation, yun talaga yung liability natin. In case, no, 3 million, labagpas ka ng 3 million, or you volunteer as a taxpayer. Sa transforming yan, marami. Sabrang dami sa transforming. <clears throat> so dito, yan. Kasi sobrang laki ng difference eh. In fact, no, yung yung entire discussion natin is all transforming. Um, nakita naman natin na uh, pwede mong i-transform yung liability niya, for example dito, total of 280 no, plus yung 1% pa na liability niya for percentage tax. 2,220. Magkano nga 280 plus 30 yun, no? So 310. Yung 310 niya, we can reduce to 220,000. That's, that's transforming. No? Yun yung transforming sa mga pinag-uusapan natin dito. In fact, I, I don't have to repeat them. Lahat ng mga point of discussion natin kung saan pwede pa mababain yung tax are forms of transforming. Okay? So, for example, ito, no? you can choose na yung Actually, it's not really that, pero kita mo naman kasi na there's a major distinction between a partnership which is a GPP and partnership which is not a general professional partnership. Okay, I will have to end the discussion on this slide. Medyo mahaba na actually yung video na ito. At medyo nakaka-shake din siya ng utak. But then, if you have, ano, if you have questions, please feel free to post it sa ating team, sa ating classroom doon. Huwag na kayong mahiya. O makikita yung pangalan nyo, kayong nagtanong, pero it must mean na may naintindihan kayo at medyo nalito kayo about what I said or what I discussed or possibly baka naroon akong slip of the tongue dito na namali ako, na, hin na hindi ko na napansin, na mali pala siya. It's possible. Tao lang naman ako. No? I'm not perfect. I'm not training to be a perfect person. So, kung meron ganun, then uh, raise it up. I'm more than happy to correct myself. So, if you need, ano pa, kung meron kayong mga nakikita pala ng mga example dyan, mga problems that you want us to solve, so maybe, no, kung, kung, kung if you can post it do sa ating teams, actually, this is my, my problem here, actually. Ang here, I have to come up with my own example or my own problems para meron tayo ma mapag-solution ng dito. And if you have your own uh, set of problems that we can compute as illustration and para ma-share natin sa iba natin classmates, then post it doon sa ating ano, teams. We can do that as a form of exercise. Okay, hopefully, marami kayo natutunan and hopefully, no, hindi sa makita mga ulo ninyo. Kung sakaling kailangan nyo ulitin yung problem. video, sige lang. No? Okay, di ko naman i-delete ito. If you need further guidance on what, meron pa ako naka-upload dyan. Di ko pala din-delete yan from the last end. Percentage tax, andyan pa yan. Although hindi na nga lang updated, wala pa yung create lang dyan.
Okay, so for the next lecture video, I think we will be discussing sources of financing, internal financing and um, external financing and how to choose between internal and finan uh, ex internal and external financing using again the savant approach. If okay. till next time, goodbye and thank you. <clears throat>